Hello and a very good evening. You're watching the news tonight on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are the headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi replies to critics, says government is committed to reverse slowdown, reminds opposition that GDP hasn't fallen to 5.76% for the first time, assures that GST problems will be resolved. Union Cabinet approves renaming Kandla Port as Dindayal Port and ratification of the extradition treaty between India and Lithuania. Treaty to provide legal framework to deport terrorists and criminals. Reserve Bank of India keeps repo rate unchanged in its fourth bi-monthly policy for 2017-18. Also cuts economic growth forecast for the current fiscal to 6.7% from earlier projections of 7.3%. Pakistan violates ceasefire for the third day in a row. Pakistani rangers resort to heavy mortar shelling along the line of control in Poonj district. Three army jawans injured. And U.S. expels 15 Cuban diplomats to match staff production at the U.S. Embassy in Havana. Decision follows mystery attacks on American personnel. Cuba protests against decision. Well, Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said that his government is committed to reverse the current phase of economic slowdown. Acknowledging that the country's growth rate had come down in the April-June quarter, he said that the dip in economic growth is one quarter may have encouraged the pessimists, but it is not the first time that the growth has dipped to 5.7% in any quarter. The Prime Minister was addressing company secretaries at the inauguration of the Golden Jubilee Year of the Institute of Company Secretaries. Hitting out at the previous dispensation and critics, Prime Minister Modi reminded them that the country's economy witnessed high growth for three years in a row after the BJP formed the government at the centre. He also praised demonetization, pointing out that uh, the cash-to-GDP ratio came down to 9% from the earlier 12% after the exercise. The Prime Minister pointed out that double-digit inflation came down to less than 3%, with the current account deficit and fiscal deficit touching 2.5% and 3.5%. Allaying fears of dwindling economic growth, Prime Minister Modi asserted that fundamentals of Indian economy remain strong and that the reform process will continue. Sathiyo, do you think that this is the first time in the world that the growth of GDP in any time of the country is reached to 5.7% of the country? Is it the first time in the world? पिछली सरकार में छह साल में आठ बार ऐसे मौके आए जब विकास दर 5.7 प्रतिशत या उससे नीचे गिरी थी कि सरकार इस ट्रेंड को रिवर्स करने के लिए पूरी तरह से प्रतिबद्ध है क्षमतावान है हम फैसले लेने के लिए तैयार है विदेश में जमा काले धन के मन लिए बहुत कठोर ब्लैक मनी एक्ट बनाया गया कई नए नए देशों के साथ टैक्स ट्रिटिज की गई और पुराने टैक्स समझौतों में हमने बदलाव भी किया उनके साथ बैठ करके नए तरीके ढूंढे बेनामी संपत्ति कानून लगाया किया गया कई वर्षों से लटका हुआ गुड एंड सिंपल टैक्स जीएसटी डीमोनेटाइजेशन का फैसला लेने की हिम्मत भी इसी सरकार ने दिखाई द गवर्नमेंट हैज डिसाइडेड टू रीनेम गुजरात कांडला पोर्ट एज दीन दयाल उपाध्याय पोर्ट द डिसीजन इफेक्टिव इमीडिएटली वॉज टेकन एट अ यूनियन कैबिनेट मीटिंग इन न्यू डेली टूडे The Union Cabinet was also apprised of a Memorandum of Understanding signed by the Railways Ministry with Switzerland that will help the two countries to develop uh, tilting trains. The MOU signed on August 31st this year will enable technical cooperation in areas like traction, rolling stock, EMU and train sets. Traction 
propulsion equipment and freight and passenger cars. The cabinet also approved ratification of the extradition treaty between India and Lithuania. It will provide for a mutual legal framework to deport terrorists, economic offenders and other criminals. Besides this, the union cabinet gave ex post facto approval to an MOU between India and Myanmar to upgrade the Women's Police Training Centre at Yamethin in Myanmar. Well, the Reserve Bank of India kept the repo rate unchanged in its fourth bi-monthly policy for the financial year 2017-18 on Wednesday. RBI has also cut the economic growth forecast for the current fiscal to 6.7% from earlier projections of 7.3%. Here are more details. The central bank provided no respite to loan borrowers ahead of the festive season. The RBI Monetary Policy Panel voted to retain status quo. The repo rate, or the rate at which the RBI lends to the banks, has been retained at 6% and the cash reserve ratio, the amount of deposits banks park with RBI, was kept unchanged at 4%. The Apex Bank also raised inflation projection to 4.2 to 4.6% for the second half of the current fiscal due to firming global oil prices and uncertainty on the tariff crop output. MPC reviewed uh, current and evolving macroeconomic and financial conditions and decided to keep the PC rate uh, unchanged at 6% while maintaining a neutral monetary policy stance. Uh, this was by a majority of 5 to 1. The MPC reiterated its commitment to keep headline inflation close to 4%. We expressed concern about the loss of momentum of growth in the early months of 2017-18. The RBI also said that the implementation of GST adversely impacted manufacturing and may delay investment revival. Industry chambers had pitched for a rate cut to propel private investments to provide a booster shot to the economy. The concern on the top is the employment that is not being generated. and uh, So the industry was extremely hopeful that the RBI will be uh, focusing on more on growth rather than uh, only simply containing the uh, inflation. Unfortunately, our growth, the industrial production is less and less. Uh, exports are uh, increasing, and we should the employment of this country. But I understand that the RBI has been focused on its attention to the inflation. किसी हद तक वो भी ठीक है कि भई जब इनकम लोगों की बढ़नी रही है तो इन्फ्लेशन अगर उनके ऊपर ज्यादा पड़ेगा तो उनके ऊपर दोरी मार हो जाएगी द आरबीआई अंडरलाइन दैट द रीसेंट स्ट्रक्चरल रिफॉर्म्स आर इंप्रूविंग बिजनेस एनवायरनमेंट ट्रांसपेरेंसी एंड इंक्रीजिंग फॉर्मलाइजेशन ऑफ द इकॉनमी इट हाउएवर कॉशन दैट कंसर्टेड एफर्ट्स आर नीडेड टू रीस्टार्ट स्टॉल्ड इन्वेस्टमेंट द सेंट्रल बैंक आल्सो स्टेटेड दैट इट विल कंटिन्यू टू वर्क टुवर्ड्स रेजोल्यूशन ऑफ स्ट्रेस्ड एसेट्स इन बैंक्स Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha Television. Well, Pakistani troops continue to violate the ceasefire along the LOC in Jammu and Kashmir. In fresh cross-border firing on Wednesday, three army jawans were injured as Pakistani troops fired from automatic weapons and shelled mortars at forward posts along the LOC in Poonch district. On Tuesday, an army jawan was killed in cross-border fire in Poonch. Two civilians were also killed in heavy shelling by Pakistan on Monday. Meanwhile, in Srinagar, the retailing ceremony of martyred assistant sub-inspector B.K. Yadav was held. Yadav made the supreme sacrifice while fighting terrorists at 182 battalion BSF camp in Srinagar on Tuesday. Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar announced an excretion of 11 lakh rupees to the next of kin of B.K. Yadav, who was a native of Bhagalpur. Well, moving on now, President Ramnath Kovind began the first leg of his four-day visit to Djibouti and Ethiopia. The President is also the first Indian leader to visit Djibouti. He was received by Djibouti and Prime Minister Kamil Mohammed at the airport. On a two-day visit to Djibouti, President Ramnath Kovind had a summit-level meeting with his counterpart Ismail Omar Guleh. An agreement to streamline regular foreign office talks was signed in the presence of both leaders President Kovind urged the Djibouti president to ratify membership of International Solar Alliance by the country's parliament. 
Djibouti is a founding member of the Solar Alliance, launched by His Excellency Prime Minister Modi, you know, last year. Djibouti is the founder member of International Solar Alliance along with India and France. This no doubt indicates Djibouti's desire to chart its own independent path even as China and the US are not part of the alliance. Djibouti has shown itself as a friend of India by coming to its aid to evacuate Indians trapped in war zones of Yemen. President appreciated the help that was given to uh, Indians who were uh, caught up in the war zone in Yemen in the rescue effort uh, in Rahat uh, operation and uh, also uh, invited the president uh, on behalf of the government of India to attend the Solar Alliance Summit that is going to be held in India uh, in December 2017. Djibouti is important for India because of Chinese military base. At the time of the Doklam standoff, China tried to showcase its military powers from there. India wants to persuade Djibouti not to allow its soil to be used for provocative activities. Djibouti is alive to Indian sensitivities which was seen in the way Prime Minister Abdul Qadir Kamil Mohammed received President Kovid in a warm ceremonial welcome. Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu inaugurated the World Space Week today at the Satish Dhawan Space Centre at Sri Hari Kota in Andhra Pradesh. Vice President said ISRO has been achieving good results by taking up space research at its lowest cost compared to other countries. He also recalled the contributions made by scientists like Satish Dhawan and Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Since the baby steps with the launch of first sounding rocket from Tumba, Equatorial Rocket Launch Station, in 1963 and the first satellite Aryabhatta in 1975, India has made giant strides and has emerged today as one of the leading space-faring nations thanks to the visionaries like Professor Vikram Sarabhai, Professor Satish Dhawan and former President great son of this country Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Vice President Naidu also addressed uh, the 49th convocation of Acharya N. G. Ranga Agricultural University in Nellore. Addressing the event, he said uh, increased production and efficient distribution of food grains can move our country forward to achieve the goal of zero hunger and adequate nutrition for all. Andhra Pradesh Governor and Chancellor of uh, Angrao ESL Narsimhan and uh, State Agriculture Minister Somi Reddy Chandramohan Reddy were also present on the occasion. You cannot have an imported food security. You must have a homegrown food security. That is the principle one has to understand very clearly. Not only scientists, but also the rulers, the planners, and also the farmers. They should all understand with the growing population and with the changing food habits and with also improving the economy. The intake is increasing. The demand also is increasing. And the production also has to adequately increase. Well, after BJP Chief Amit Shah, UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath arrived in Kerala to canvass public support against the ruling left party. BJP has launched a 15-day Protect the People march in protest against the political killings of RSS workers in the state. While the BJP alleges that it's the left's nature to grab power at gunpoint, the left has said that the violence in the state is RSS's doing. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath arrived in Kerala's Kannur district on Wednesday to participate in BJP's Jan Raksha Yatra. Adityanath undertook a 7-kilometer march along with Kerala BJP leaders against the ruling CPIM for allegedly targeting BJP workers in the state and said that there was no scope for political violence in a democracy. कम्युनिस्ट सरकार को त्रिपुरा और वेस्ट बंगाल की सरकार के लिए यह यात्रा एक आईना है कि वे अपने गिरतियों के बारे में पश्चाताप करें और निर्दोष लोगों की हत्याएं बंद करें यह दुर्भाग्यपूर्ण है लोकतंत्र में हिंसा के लिए कोई जगह नहीं लेकिन यहां पर निरंतर राजनीतिक कार्यकर्ताओं की हत्याएं हो रही हैं BJP president Amit Shah had launched the yatra from Kerala chief minister Pinarayi Vijayan's hometown in Kannur on Tuesday the yatra will travel through the state before culminating in Tiruvananthapuram on the 17th of October Several senior party functionaries are also likely to join the 14-day march. Shah also announced the Padyatra campaign against political killings in Kerala in all state capitals. 
जब से यहां पर कम्युनिस्ट गठबंधन की सरकार आई है भारतीय जनता पार्टी और राष्ट्रीय स्वयंसेवक संघ के तेरह से ज्यादा कार्यकर्ताओं की हत्या कर दी गई है केरल में पयनूर से लेकर त्रिवेंद्रम तक जाने वाली है और हर रोज हर रोज केरल की जनता को एक कम्युनिस्ट हिंसा के खिलाफ एकजुट करने का काम करने वाली है Senior left leaders have called BJP's march a disinformation campaign and blame the violence of the BJP itself. What baton is Yogi Adityanath to take? Their relay race is a race of violence, of terror, of intimidation, of bullying because these are all encounter specialists. This is in the DNA of the RSS. So when they go to Kerala, people of Kerala will show them the schools of Kerala. they will show them the hospitals of kerala and let aditya nath learn from the hospital and health system in kerala to help the poor children of gorakhpur kerala has been witnessing widespread tension due to bjp left political rivalry in the state while bjp accuses the ruling left government of promoting the killings of rss workers in kerala the left leaders claim that at least 85 leaders have been brutally killed by rss supporters since 2002 Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV Well a 4.5 billion dollar agreement was signed in the presence of finance minister Arun Jaitley and his Bangladeshi counterpart AMA Mohit in Dhaka today The credit agreement focuses on infrastructure and social sector development The new Indian line of credit will fund 17 major projects in Bangladesh that include electricity railroads roads shipping and ports Bangladesh will pay an interest rate of 1% a year. It will have 20 years to pay back the loans with a grace period of 5 years. Jaitley said India has stood by Bangladesh's attempts to develop and will continue to do so in the future. The agreement was announced during Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's visit to India in April. Well, the center has reduced the basic excise duty rate on both branded and unbranded petrol and diesel by 2 rupees per liter. The new price has been effective from today onwards. The move comes amid the recent hike in prices of petrol and diesel which is being attributed to wavering market price of crude oil. According to the finance ministry, the move is an attempt to soften the impact of rising international prices of crude petroleum oil and petrol and diesel on their retail sale prices. It also asserted that the decision has been taken by the government in order to protect the interests of the common man. The ministry further stated that the government will experience revenue loss of about 26,000 crore rupees in a full year while 13,000 crore rupees in the remaining part of the current financial year. Well, here's a round up now of some other news from across the country and nationwide. Satyapal Malik was sworn in as the governor of Bihar today. He was administered oath of office by Patna High Court Chief Justice Rajendra Menon at Raj Bhavan in Patna. The post had fallen vacant after Ramnath Kovind resigned following his nomination for presidential poll in June. Rajneesh Kumar, managing director at uh, the State Bank of India, has been named new chairman of State Bank of India. Kumar will succeed incumbent chairperson Arun Dutty Bhattacharya whose uh, tenure ends later this week. The appointments committee of the cabinet uh, approved the uh, Kumar's appointment for 3 years from October 7th. On a 3-day visit to UP Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi arrived in his uh, parliamentary constituency Amethi. He will visit his mother and Congress President Sonia Gandhi's constituency Raibareli. On the last day of his visit he will hold a janta darshan in Raibareli and meet workers there. Ani Preet Insan the adopted daughter of convicted Dera Sacha Sauda chief Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh was sent to 6 day police custody remand by the Panchkula court today. Ani Preet arrived at the Panchkula court complex along with Sukhdeep Kaur another Dera follower who sheltered her when she was on the run. It's time for a short break now, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Jade was popular during Mughal era and gained prominence during Akbar's rule in 15th and 16th century. It came all the way from Iran and Central Asia in attractive colors. The royal day had a unique use for it. Since jade changed color when it came in contact with arsenic, they started utensils like plates, jars, bowls and even hookah with it and thereby avoided getting poisoned by rivals. Welcome back. You're watching Rajas about Television. Well, the Donald Trump administration on Wednesday threw its weight behind India's opposition to the China-Pakistan economic corridor. US, U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis, who is a strong opponent of China's ambitious Obor initiative, said it passes through a disputed territory. United States has backed India's concerns on the One Belt, One Road initiative under the China-Pakistan economic corridor. The Trump administration said that no country should be dictate terms. U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis told a congressional hearing in Washington that the contentious road passes through a disputed territory. India skipped the Belt and Road Forum in May this year due to sovereignty concerns. OBOR passes through Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, which is unacceptable to India. Regarding one belt, one road, I think in a globalized world, there's many belts and many roads, and no one nation should put themselves in a position, put itself into a position of dictating one belt, one road. Uh, that said, the one belt, one road also goes through disputed territory, and I think that in itself shows the vulnerability of trying to establish that sort of a dictate. Matter said Pakistan can get economic benefits from India if it fulfills international responsibilities and ends safe havens for terror. Pakistan has a, uh, a convoluted history with terrorism. There can be little doubt that there have been terrorist groups that have used Pakistan as a haven for attacks outwardly, and not just towards Afghanistan. We've seen the attacks on India as well. At the same time, Few nations, perhaps none, have lost as many troops fighting terrorists as they have. The articulation of the U.S. stand on the issue comes weeks after U.S. President Donald Trump announced his South Asia policy, in which he enunciated a tough policy against Pakistan. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television. Well, the U.S. has expelled 15 Cuban diplomats to match staff reductions at the U.S. Embassy in Havana following mysterious and bizarre attacks on American personnel there. A State Department official said that the 15 Cuban diplomats will have a week to leave the United States. Cuba has registered a strong protest. Here's a report. For months, starting late last year, U.S. diplomats in Havana have been complaining of incidents that left them feeling ill. Officials and personnel have complained of sudden wave of nausea dizziness and headaches, accompanied by strange sounds. Last week, the U.S. pulled out more than half of its own embassy staff from Havana, and on Tuesday, the Trump administration expelled 15 Cuban diplomats. The Trump administration claims this isn't a punishment, but government officials in Havana are seeing red. The Ministry of Relations Exteriores protests energicamente and denuncia this decision unfounded and inacceptable. Así como el pretexto utilizado para justificarla. No, this is not a punishment. This is not a punishment. Cuba, we are not going to say, is responsible for these attacks. Let me be clear about that, okay? And I think we have. We have consistently said there is an investigation ongoing. On the streets of Havana, Cubans and Americans reacted with bewilderment and anger. There is no place safer for Americans to come than Cuba in the entire world, and that's been the case. There have been no incidents by the State Department and FBI's release, uh, no incidents against anyone other than the 21 diplomats. Talking 
Top Cuban officials, including Cuban President Raul Castro, have denied any Cuban involvement in the incidents and allowed the FBI to investigate. But analysts say the reductions are just the latest step in the rapidly unraveling U.S.-Cuban relations, which were restored in 2015 by former President Barack Obama. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television. Well, Catalonia will declare independence from Spain in a few days. Its regional president, Carles Puigdemont, said on Wednesday. In his first interview since a disputed vote on Sunday, he said that his government will act at the end of this week. Catalonia's regional parliament's governing body also met on Wednesday to decide when to call a parliamentary session to discuss the results of the banned referendum on leaving Spain. It's expected that the parliament could declare independence during this session. Massive protests also continue as hundreds of pro-Catalonia supporters march through the streets in Barcelona to protest against the Spanish National Police. As tensions between Spain and the northeastern Catalonia region continue to mount, Spain's King Philip VI called for unity. He, however, accused the Catalan leaders who staged a banned independence referendum on Sunday of shattering democratic principles and of dividing Catalan society. Con sus decisiones han vulnerado de una manera sistemática las normas aprobadas legal y legítimamente, demostrando una deslealtad inadmisible hacia los poderes del Estado. Hoy la sociedad catalana está fracturada y enfrentada. Esas autoridades han menospreciado los afectos y los sentimientos de solidaridad que han unido y unirán al conjunto de los españoles. Para la independencia, 48 horas después de que se hagan oficiales todos los resultados que se están escrutando. Probablemente esto va a acabar cuando uh, los votos del exterior, a final de semana, y por tanto nos movemos entre el fin de semana e inicios de la semana que viene. Well, here's a roundup now with some other international news and global buzz. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department released raw body camera video of police officers responding to the mass shooting by 64-year-old Stephen Paddock. Authorities said that Paddock left an arsenal of 49 guns but no clear clues as to why he staged the attack on a crowd of 20,000 from the Mandalay Bay Hotel. 59 people were killed and more than 500 people were injured. Pakistan's finance minister Ishak Dar appeared before an anti-corruption court to face graft charges filed in the Panama Papers case. The NAB team has provided a list of 28 witnesses to the court that adjourned the hearing till October 12th, when two more witnesses will be called to give evidence. Scientists Jacques Dubochet, Joaquin Frank and Richard Henderson won the 2017 Nobel Prize for Chemistry to develop cryo-electron microscopy which simplifies the imaging of biomolecules. Chemistry is the third of this year's Nobel Prizes after the winners of the Medicine and Physics Prizes were announced earlier this week. Well, that's it on this newscast. Good night. Thank you.